Hi, everybody. Um, so I know that this version of the story looks a lot different than what we've been working with um, the last week and a half or so. And I am actually going to be linking the link to this PDF version of the story instead of the one that we have on Schoology now because I like this version a lot more. Um, and I think it's easier to read and follow along with, and it looks more like an actual book than the other one does. So just a heads up in case you go to look for something and it doesn't look like it did before. Um, we left off in Chapter 4. We are about, I don't know, I would say three quarters of the way done. We will finish Chapter 4 today, and we'll probably get into a little bit of Chapter 5. Um, and last video, I told you that the content of this particular chapter was a little weird and uncomfortable at times. Um, I mean, Jonas is in the house of the old bathing an old lady, and he's in there with his two other friends for volunteer hours, and they are also bathing old people, which I'm sure none of you have experienced bathing an old person. Um, and I, I know it sounds weird, it is a little weird, but as we talked about yesterday, um, you need to understand that it's it's different in this community because the whole idea is everybody helps everybody else out in order for the community to run smoothly and be that paradise, right? Even though this is a dystopia, it is modeled after a utopia, and they want everything to be perfect, but the way that they go about making things perfect is wrong, okay? But we haven't really gotten to that part just yet. So as of right now, the community is modeled to be a utopia, okay? And again, the whole idea is to make it to make it perfect for everybody. And so Jonas helping this old woman bathe herself when she really wouldn't be able to do it herself isn't weird or awkward. Um, it's just him being helpful, okay? And also him trying to figure out where he fits. So we're going to go ahead and continue. Um, according to this, we're on page 30, about a third of... Three quarters of the way down, we are right here is where we left off. Last night he had watched as his father bathed the new child. This was much the same. The fragile skin, the soothing water, the gentle motion of his hand slippery with soap, the relaxed, peaceful, peaceful smile on the woman's face reminded him of Gabriel being bathed. And the nakedness, too. It was against the rules for children or adults to look at another's nakedness, but the rule did not apply to to new children or the old. I was glad. It was a nuisance to keep oneself covered while changing for games, and the required apology, if one had by mistake glimpsed another's body, was always awkward. He couldn't see why it was necessary. He liked the feeling of safety here, in this warm and quiet room. He liked the expression of trust on the woman's face as she lay in the water, unprotected, exposed, and free. From the corner of his eye, he could see his friend Fiona help the old man from the tub and tenderly pat his thin, naked body dry with an absorbent cloth. She helped him into his robe. Jonas thought Larissa had drifted, in, drifted into sleep, as the old often did, and he was careful to keep his motion steady and gentle so he wouldn't wake her. He was surprised when she spoke, her eyes still closed. This morning we celebrated the release of Roberto, she told him. It was wonderful. I knew Roberto, Jonas said. Sorry, guys. Where was I? I helped, his, I helped with his feeding the last time I was here, just a few weeks ago. He was a very interesting man. Larissa opened her eyes. They told his whole life before they released him, she said. They always do. But to be honest, she whispered with a mischievous look. Some of the tellings are a little boring. I've never seen some of the... I've even seen some of the old fall asleep during tellings. When they released Edna recently. Did you know Edna? Jonas shook his head. He could, couldn't recall anyone named Edna. Well, they tried to make her life more sound more meaningful. And of course, she added primly, all lives are meaningful. I don't mean that they aren't. But Edna, my goodness, she was a birth mother, and then she worked in the food production for years until she came here. She never even had a family unit. Larissa lifted her head and looked around to make sure no one else was listening. Then she confided, I don't think Edna was very smart. Jonas laughed. He rinsed, his, rinsed her arm and laid it back into the water and began to wash her feet. She murmured with pleasure as he massaged her foot with the sponge. But R Roberto's life was wonderful, Larissa went on after a moment. He had been an instructor of 11s. So you know how important that is. And he'd been on the planning committee. And goodness, I don't know how he found the time. He also raised two very successful children. And he was also 
the one who did the landscaping design for the central plaza. He didn't do the actual labor, of course. Now you're back. Lean forward and I'll help you sit up. Jonas put his arms around her and supported her as she sat. He squeezed the sponge against her back and began to rub her sharp bone shoulders. Tell me about the celebration. Well, there was a telling of his life that is always first. Then the toast. We all raised our glasses and cheered. We chanted the anthem. He made a lovely goodbye speech and several of us made little speeches wishing him well. I didn't, though. I've never been fond of public speaking. He was thrilled. You should have seen the look on his face when they let him go. Jonas slowed the strokes of his hand on her back thoughtfully. Larissa, he asked, what happens when they make the actual release? Where exactly did Roberto go? She lifted her, her bare wet shoulder in a small shrug. I don't know. I don't think anybody does except the committee. He just bowed to all of us and then walked like they all do through the special door in the releasing room. But you should have seen his look. Pure happiness, I'd call it. Jonas grinned. I wish I'd been there to see it. Larissa frowned. I don't know why they don't let children come. Not enough room, I guess. They should all enlarge or they should enlarge the releasing room. We'll have to suggest to the committee. Maybe they'd study it, Jonas said. And Larissa twirled with laughter. Right, she hooted. And Jonas helped her from the tub. Okay, so um aside from again the awkward content, we get some information about release, right? And if we go back to our notes, we already oops, we already know that release can happen in three ways. We have the release of the elderly, and I'll put in parentheses here, it's a celebration, right? And that's what Larissa just kind of told us, especially with the release of Roberto, right? So they tell your whole life story. Um, they make sure that, you know, the person who is being released from the community, if they're elderly, everybody else knows that they had a life well lived. Um, then we, have, of course, have the re release of new children, which is, not a good thing, and then punishment, which again is not a good thing. So we have the release of the elderly, and again, no one really knows what release means, and we don't know what release means just yet, um, but we do know that children are not allowed to see the old be released, and I don't really think anybody um, who isn't immediately a part of the ceremony or whatever's happening really knows what release is or what it looks like, so that's just an interesting piece of information that we have. All right, so let's keep reading. Chapter 5. Usually at the morning ritual when the family members told their dreams, Jonas didn't contribute much. He rarely dreamed. Sometimes he awoke with a feeling of fragments afloat in his sleep, but he couldn't seem to grasp them and put them together into something worthy of telling at the ritual. But this morning was different. He had dreamed a very vividly dreamed very vividly the night before. Um guys, <laughs> really quick this also has interesting content, um, and we're going to have an uncomfortable one-sided discussion. Again, I'm kind of thankful that we're not doing this in person and it is over a video. Again, bear with me. Um, if you have questions, obviously you can email me. I will do my best to explain things, um, and we will go from there. So just a heads up, there's some more interesting content in this chapter. His mind wandered while Lily, as usual, recounted a lengthy dream, this one a frightening one in which she had against, had, against the rules, been riding her mother's bicycle and been caught by the security guards. They all listened carefully and discussed with Lily the warning that the dream had given. Thank you for your dream, Lily, Jonas said, the standard phrase automatically, and tried to pay attention, better attention while his mother told of a dream fragment, a disquieting scene where she had been chastised for a rule infraction she didn't understand. Together, they agreed that it probably resulted from her feelings when she had reluctantly dealt punishment to the citizen who had broken the major rules a second time. Father said that he had no dreams. Gabe, father asked, looking down at the basket where the new child lay gurgling after his feeding, ready to be taken back to the nurturing center for the day. They all laughed. Dreamtelling began with threes. If new children dreamed, no one knew. Jonas, mother asked. They always asked, though they knew how rarely Jonas had a dream to tell. I did dream last night, Jonas told them. He shifted in his chair, frowning. Good, father said. Tell us. The details aren't clear, really, Jonas explained, trying to recreate the odd dream in his mind. I think I was in the bath bathing room at the house of the old. That's where you were yesterday, father pointed out. Jonas nodded. But it wasn't really the same. There was a tub in the dream, but only one. And the real bathing room has rows and rows of them. 
but the room in the dream was very was warm and damp and i t had taken off my tunic and but i hadn't put on the smock so my chest was bare i was perspiring because it was so warm and fiona was there the way she was yesterday asher too mother asked Jonas shook his head. No, it was only me and Fiona alone in the room, standing beside the tub. She was laughing, but I wasn't. But I wasn't. I was almost a little angry at her in the dream because she wasn't taking me seriously. Seriously about what, Lily asked. Jonas looked at his plate. For some reason that he didn't understand, he felt slightly embarrassed. I think I was trying to convince her that she should get into the tub of water. He paused. He, he knew he had to tell it all, that it was not only all right but necessary to tell all of a dream so he forced himself to relate the part that made him uneasy i wanted her to take off her clothes and get into the tub he explained quickly i wanted to bathe her i had the sponge in my hand but she wouldn't she kept laughing and saying no he looked about his parents that's all he said can you describe the strongest feeling in your dream son father asked jonas thought about it the details were murky and vague but the feelings were clear and flooded him again now as he thought the wanting he said i knew that she shouldn't and i think i knew that i knew that she wouldn't and i think i knew that she shouldn't but i wanted it so terribly i could feel the wanting all through me thank you for your dream jonas mother said after a moment she glanced at father lily father said it's time to leave for school would you walk b beside me this morning and keep an eye on the new child's basket we want to be certain he doesn't wiggle himself loose Jonas began to rise to collect his school books. He thought it surprising that he hadn't taken or hadn't talked about his dream at length before the thank you. Perhaps they found it as confusing as he had. Wait, Jonas, mother said gently. I'll write an apology to your instructor so that you won't have to speak one for being late. He sank back down into his chair, puzzled. He waved to Father and Lily as as they left the dwelling, carrying Gabe in his basket. He watched while mother tidied the remains of the morning meal and placed a tray by the front door for the collection crew. Finally, she sat down beside him at the table. Jonas, she said with a smile, the feelings you described as the wanting, is this your first, it was your first stirrings. Father and I have been expecting it to happen to you. It happens to everyone. It happened to father when he was your age and it happened to me. It will happen to Lily someday. And very often, mother added, it begins with the dream. Stirrings. He had heard the word before. He remembered that there was a reference to the stirrings in the Book of Rules, though he did remember what it said. And now, now and then the speaker mentioned it. Attention, a reminder that stirrings must be reported in order for treatment to take place. He had always ignored that announcement because he didn't understand it, and it had never seemed to apply to him anyway. He ignored, as most citizens did, many of the commands and reminders read by the speaker. Do I have to report it? He asked mother. She laughed. You did. In the dream telling, that's enough. But what about the treatment? The speaker says the treatment must take place. Jonas felt miserable. Just when the ceremony was about to happen, his ceremony of twelve, would he have to go away someplace for treatment just because of a stupid dream? His mother laughed again in a reassuring, affectionate way. No, no, she said. It's just the pills. You're ready for the pills. That's all. That's treatment for stirrings. Okay, guys. So... <sighs> So the dream that Jonas had, it's obvious that he has feelings for Fiona, right? He has a crush on Fiona. He thinks she's really cute. She's smart. The way he described her, remember, she's smart and pretty and fun. And that's exactly what it is like to have a crush on someone, right? And I know you've all had a, have had a crush on someone at some point. It's That's life, right? And that crush comes from a physical attraction. And that's what this whole dream is about and what stirrings are, okay? When you like someone, you're physically attracted to them. And so the pills that Jonas's mom is giving him are going to stop the physical attraction from continuing. They're going to get rid of that feeling altogether, okay? Um, so Jonas has a crush on Fiona. And now that those feelings are coming up, the hormones, right, as being a teenager often causes, the pills are going to stop those feelings from happening anymore. Okay, and we're going to stop there for today because I'm almost out of time for the video. Um, we will talk about this more next reading, so just keep that in mind. Thanks, guys.